Toiling away in the yards and on industrial spurs of Class 1 railroads are a small but important group of locomotives built several generations ago, the in-cab switchers. One seen in almost every major yard and working back alley spotting freight cars at customers' docks, their importance on a railroad's roster unfortunately has diminished over the years. Electromotive Division of General Motors, or what we know as EMD, had by far the most successful line of in-cab switchers. The company built more than two dozen variants during a production period that spanned more than half a century. While all major builders constructed their own style of in-cab and offset cab and center cab and critters and all kinds of other types of switchers, hundreds of which still live on in short line and industrial roles today. Only EMD models survive today on all seven Class 1 railroads, except maybe for CP. As the need for purpose-built switch engines waned in the 1960s and 1970s, the railroads began to look for a more versatile locomotive that could perform both road and yard chores. Responding to that need, EMD constructed a variation to its successful 1500 horsepower SW1500 switcher introduced in the 1960s called the SW1504. The SW-1504 was essentially an SW-1500 equipped with a higher-speed Blomberg road switcher truck, but its design failed to attract the attention of U.S. railroads. Only one customer, the Nationales de Mexico, bought it. The final line of road switchers EMD introduced in the early 1970s was the multi-purpose or MP line of switchers. This model used Blomberg trucks and had options for accessories such as a toilet to meet crew requirements for service outside of yards. Sales of the MP line were modest in the 1970s and 1980s with MP15DC, MP15AC, and MP15T productive collectively failing to match the totals of other well-known EMD models such as the SW9, the SW1200, and the SW1500. The main difference between the three MP models is that the MP15DC uses a DC main generator while the MP15AC has an AR10 alternator. The MP15T uses an 8-cylinder turbocharged engine instead of a 12-cylinder engine used in the AC and DC models. Deregulation of America's railroads under the Staggers Act in 1980, however, nixed the switcher manufacturing business. Under staggers, freight railroads were now permitted to radically overhaul their networks, operating procedures, and business models since they were now free of ICC supervision. One of the resulting changes was downsizing of unprofitable operations with many other branch lines and local operations either abandoned or sold off to lower operating cost short lines. We saw a lot of that here in northeastern Pennsylvania with Conrail. That created a surplus of low-horsepower locomotives, and GM's EMD subsidiary assembled its last MP15 ACs for freight railroads in October 1980, four for the Katy and one for the Golden Triangle short line out of Mississippi. Several MP15 ACs were delivered to U.S. government facilities and Canadian port operators in 1982 through August 1984, when National Harbor Board No. 8406 was shipped from the London, Ontario plant to the Montreal port operator. The final 34 MP15Ts were delivered to the seaboard system in late 1984 and 1985. The last models produced by EMD continued to survive in sizable numbers on Class 1 railroads with the SW1500, the MP15DC, the MP15AC, and MP15T models that are most prevalent. Other than the standard maintenance cycles, most fleets are still in their as-built configurations. Recently, several railroads have attempted to implement upgrades to their in-cab switchers in an effort to extend their service life, but one eliminated them entirely. Canadian Pacific is the only railroad to completely purge its in-cab switcher fleet from revenue service. The last MP15 ACs were eliminated from their roster in late 2014, leaving only SW900 number 6711. This unit was captive at CP's Ogden Locomotive Shops in Calgary and was used as a shop switcher and for positive train control testing. That was back in 2014. The Canadian National had embarked on a small overhaul program at its Homewood, Illinois shops on its remaining SW14 switchers. 
The SW-14s were originally built for the Illinois Central in the 1950s as EMD SW-7s and SW-9s. Illinois Central's Paducah, Kentucky shop remanufactured them in the 1980s and designated them as SW-14s. Canadian National still owned four in 2014 and was rebuilding them for service in the Chicago area. Union Pacific was underway with the program to upgrade their fleet of MP-15 ACs and MP-15 DCs, installing ZTR's Nexus 3 eye control systems at its North Little Rock, Arkansas shops. Try saying that fast three times. The control system was popular with UP, which was installing this and other locomotive models as well. The Norfolk Southern was the most ambitious in terms of rebuilding its in-cab switcher fleet. The Royal Deltuna, Pennsylvania and Roanoke, Virginia shops began a rebuild program on the MP-15 DC fleet in 2011 that involved replacing the main generator with an AR-10 alternator, adding alignment control couplers and other upgrades. NS also upgraded one MP-15 DC in 2011 with increased horsepower output. Number 2423 had its stock 1500 horsepower 12-cylinder 645E prime mover replaced with a turbocharged version of the same engine rated at 2500 horsepower but was later reduced to 2100 horsepower. The radiator system was enlarged to support the increased cooling needed by the higher horsepower engine, including an enlarged long hood with additional radiators and cooling fans. The unit, now designated as an MP21E, also received the other upgrades found on other MP15E rebuilds. With their ranks slowly diminishing by the decade, in-cab switchers will most likely always have a role on certain Class 1 rosters due to their smaller size and weight, but their days dominating yard and industrial service certainly peaked a long time ago, at least with the Class 1s. Thank goodness for regionals and short lines like the Reading and Northern.